All right, now let's go to counting atoms instead of counting nouns. And we're gonna count atoms and molecules by mass. And our example question is gonna be how many carbon, at carbon atoms are there in 26.8 grams of carbon? Now, uh, this problem is going to start to use a couple of conversion factors. Um, and sort of, uh, let's, let's start though by taking the 26.8 grams of carbon, that's gonna be our given. And I don't know how many unit conversion factors there are gonna be, but let's uh, assume there's gonna be just a couple and we'll make some space for them. <clears throat> now, uh, our answer over here is gonna be blank uh, atoms of carbon and we have a couple sets of conversion factors now we have from grams to moles and that's called the molar mass and the molar mass for carbon since it's just carbon it's an atom is going to be 12.01 grams per mole of carbon and let's see, so that gets us to moles, but we want atoms. And as we've already talked, um, we have to use Avogadro's number. Which is the number of things in a mole. And it says that one mole of anything, and here I'm using the abbreviation for mole, just I know how, uh, like I did there. So one mole of anything, but in this particular case, carbon is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, atoms, because this is just an atom. Atoms of or atoms carbon. And this is a unit conversion. So both of these are going to be our unit conversion factors. We have grams here, so we're going to need to use the molar mass first. And we're going to need to use the molar mass with the grams on the bottom. And the moles on the top. That gets us to cancel our grams out. And you can do it, well, it's actually grams of carbon, if we're being specific. Um, now we're left with units of moles of carbon. And we have a unit conversion factor. Well, it's an equal statement right now. <clears throat> but um, we're going to turn it into a conversion factor. Any two things that are equal can be placed above and below each other, as we've seen. And we have to put the moles on the bottom. And we're going to put the atoms on the top. And that's good because our final units are atoms. Like so. Now... Uh, a couple things about this. So this is my process for solving this problem. Remember, it starts with the given, setting up a picket fence, telling me what my units are that I'm going for, and then systematically pulling down and writing down the unit conversions. Um, and parts of this you can do in your head, right? So you don't have to do everything. I will typically ask to see this uh, what I'm calling the picket fence or the railroad tracks it, as your work for problems. This you don't have to have. If it helps you, great. Uh, my soccer coach always used to say, practice like you intend on playing. And since playing is the exams, um, you want to you wanna have all these thoughts and abilities ready for the exam, whether you write them all on the exam or not. So anyway, it's a process. We're getting there. Um, this is my whole process. Well, almost. I still have to do the math. And let's show you how to do the math, at least how I would do it. So uh, I like to go uh, left to right doing my uh, multiplications and divisions. So 26.8 is, well, let me make sure I'm cleared. 26.8, then uh, times 1, which I don't have to do, divided by 12.01. and then multiplied by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, times 022 exponent 23rd, and that's a positive, so that's good. And then divide by one, which I don't have to do, so I'll just hit my equal sign, 
I get 1.34, etc., cetera, um, times 10 to the 24th. Make sure you check this. Um, a common mistake that students make is they just write the first three digits here and they forget this. And depending upon which kind of calculator you have, this one is actually pretty easy to miss that part if you're not looking for it. So three sig figs, I have a three in my fourth sig fig spot, so there's no rounding to do here. 1.34 uh, times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. And it should be a lot of atoms because atoms are very tiny. Um, good, that makes sense. And uh, in the end, what we've just done is we would measure this on a scale and then do unit conversions that we know to figure out how many atoms we have. Now let's do a similar example, same number of grams, except now we're talking about water molecules. Our approach in general is going to be the same, grams, or sorry, given, G, <laughs> that's capital G, 26.8 grams water. And here, typically if this problem was on your homework, um, I would give you the formula, so I apologize for that, uh, because, and on your exams, because at least for most of the exams, you're going to have what I call one concept problems. And if uh, the concept here is converting grams to uh, molecules, and if I put water in there or the name of a compound, it becomes a nomenclature question as well. And I try not to do that. Um, uh, everyone, uh, so now one concept problems can have many unit conversions, but this is a one concept problem. And um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. But that's our idea. Now let's see. I think we're going to have two unit conversions because it's just like the last one. Uh, equals over here. Um, molecules. Hmm, my line's too big. I'm going to write my units down here. Molecules H2O. And again, so this should just say H2O there if this were on your homework or even on the exam. Okay. Occasionally, two concept problems sneak onto the ends of exams. Um, they don't sneak. I put them there. They're more like challenge problems, but the most of the exams are single concept problems. All right, so similar to the last problem, we need a molar mass. Uh, so to go from grams to moles, we're going to need molar mass of H2O. And for the molar mass of a molecule like H2O, it's going to be two times the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of oxygen. So 2 times 1.008 for the hydrogens, plus 16.00, which we don't have to do, but we can. And I get 18.016. Like I said, I typically round to two decimal places for my um, uh, molar masses. And again, molar masses are supposed to have four sig figs, all consistent so far. So that's going to be 18.02 grams per mole H2O. With my grams going on the bottom and my moles going on top to cancel. And now similar to the last problem, we're going to have um, a conversion from moles to, in this case, molecules using Avogadro's number. So one mole of anything, including H2O, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Since these are molecules, I'll put molecules here. Nope. My picket fence was not quite long enough there. There, there's my equal sign too. And uh, similar to last time, well, let's see. So this is going to be a bigger number of grams for the H2O than the carbon. So I should have a smaller number, although it's still gonna be a very large number because of that 10 to the 23rd. And we'll multiply this out, 26.8 
divided by 18.02 times 6.022 exponent 23. This time I get 8.956 times 10 to the 23rd. That 6 means I'm going to round that 5 up to a 6. And my final answer is going to be 8.96 times 10 to the 23rd. And those are my molecules of H2O.